was going to say it before you did. Don't use it. And you are going to wrap with your conforming gauze. Okay. Yeah. Does this bandage have a secondary layer? No. 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 We're going to have primary layer and a tertiary layer. No secondary layer because we're not planning on there being bleeding. bleeding. So you've got to make sure your two toes are exposed. Would it bleed if it was like the amputation of one that was actually attached? Um, <clears throat> depends on if the surgeons are going to find all the bleeders or not. If it is a major high new cloth with a major attachment and the surgeon is concerned that that's going to bleed, they might ask them to put a secondary <laughs> layer in. And they probably, with a routine surgery, my plan was when I was done surgery and technicians bandage these dogs, I expected to get five days out of the bandage. If we have bleeding, we are not going to get yeah. five days. Oh, don't worry about me. No, we I'll just, just go around and answer questions while we're doing that. <clears throat> we have a choice when we do these bandages to include the toes or not. If we follow bandaging conventions, we'll include the toes and only leave these two, you know, very tips of the toes out. So that follows a bandage convention, and you're not really worried about cuffing paw. Um, I have to admit that um, when we would do these bandages, we would only go as far as the knuckle, just enough to cover the incision. But the technicians had to be really good. They had to get the tension on that bandage just right so that we didn't get puppy paw. So she, they're breaking convention mm -hmm. by not going down to the toes. So there, you can do this either way. They, so obviously the advantage is you're not going to end up with puppy paw. The disadvantage is the owners will always have to cover that with a bag and the dog goes outside. So we were just doing it for a client for the moment. If it was dry out. <coughs> All right, so no secondary layer in that bandage. The primary layer, then the plumbing gauze, and then that wrap. Matter which direction you roll it. Yeah. Oh, we Just want to try and roll. Uh, do you want me to loosen yeah. it and re-roll it for it, you? It oh, oh, you did that? Oh, you've done it. a pretty nice job of re-rolling. Way better than I would do. Add your arm. What you want to do is roll off the bandage. So you always go around 360 degrees on your first one. But it doesn't matter if you're rolling that way or if you're coming the other Cal way. Um, so clockwise or counterclockwise? Yeah. Um, the only time I'm aware of when that matters is there's a preference for putting stable bandages on horses. Yeah, but, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, in small animals, I'm not aware uh, no, of that might making be any difference. <laughs> so whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise, I think it depends on whether you're right or left-handed. Uh, stable bandages, it's all got to do with avoiding pressure on the, those accessory <coughs> elements and tendons. When you're starting a bandage like this, <coughs> like I'm finding like you get that over. Yeah. I don't know how else to say that. That like that little lit, flap. Little yeah. flap. The Thank flap. You. Yeah. I'm sorry, my brain's not working. It's foggy today. That's okay. So I'm just, just gonna stretch. put it on with a little bit of tension, mm -hmm. and then so you sort of have to like move around and catch it like that. I'm going to have to, you're not really going to have room for white tape at the end, so you're going to have to be sure that you get this all of your conforming gauze covered. There. I think yeah, it's all sticking out there. I would have been maybe a little bit more conservative in how far down I went with my gauze so that I could <laughs> have a couple of millimeters to uh, extend my vet wrap out. And don't forget that his paw is not a normal shape. If this paw were a normal shape, I think you'd find that a bit easier. You're going to practice on real patients today, so when you do put this on, I'd like you to try the client convenient method. 
and you'll find that um, you can, you know, it's fairly easy to make a nice straight border there, and then it sort of stops in a natural place, and then you go up the leg. It's really difficult not to have any little folds. Like I have a little fold here too. Would we take? Uh, we just and, take there, it. See, I can so tuck it. Thing. It'd be pretty hard to um, take that toe. There's really nothing to stick it to. I don't yeah. think I'd put a piece of tape on that one at the end. I would just leave it like that. But where do you have to put a piece of tape? Well, to uh -huh. At the proximal end for sure. Yeah. In a long haired dog, you can even weave some of the long hair into. Uh, so you go around the first time, and then when as you go around the second time with your tape, weave some of the long hair in between the two layers of white tape. That really helps to keep it stuck on. Tabs for these guys? Yeah. Right. Pigeon, yeah. No, tabs Pigeon. are for people, <laughs> not for patients. Yeah. And then as far as um, checking tension on this one, since there is no padding, it certainly is possible to put this one on too tight. So you can check this end. You should be able to easily slide your finger up. That's fine. And at the top, even with the tape, you should still be able to slide a little finger. In there. You can check the tension of this if you slide a finger in before you put your tape on. Good. So that's a nice comfortable bandage. I think it looks quite respectable. Thank you. Um, following the conventions. I want you to try the other one where you don't when you practice. Okay?